Hello everyone, this is your host, Gemma Putty, bringing health and wellness conversations from North Idaho and across this region. I'm so excited to chat with entrepreneurs, creatives, and believers as we journey together to connect more deeply to ourselves, our earth, and our communities. Cheers to shining bright and supporting local. Hello everyone, this is your host, Gemma Putty. Today, I am talking with Jenny Hegstead, the founder and executive director of Emerge CDA. Emerge is a collective art experience engaging all members of the community, from children to shy creatives to art professionals in classes and events to express their inner stories. Emerge is an icon for community building and self-expression. So I have known Jenny through friends of friends for many years, but have never had the opportunity to really understand her mission and her story with Emerge. So I'm so excited to spend today getting to chat with her and learn more about it. So welcome, Jenny. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. My pleasure. Yeah, well, let's dive in. So what is your elevator pitch for Emerge when someone says, hey, what do you do? How do you even go about describing it? Well, you know, that's kind of evolved over the years, but um, it goes a little something like, you know, Emerge is first and foremost a inclusive, inviting space for anyone in the community to, to be a part of, to feel at home in. Um, our primary mission is to support local aspiring artists that are up and coming or just looking to do more conceptual type of exhibits, you know, just different things like that. And then our other piece of our program is we want to have affordable, or we do, we provide affordable fine art ed- education within our space as well. So. Um, you know, just kind of offering kind of a one-stop shop for all things within the arts is kind of what we're about. We just try to invite the community into our space to enjoy the arts. Yeah, so good. How did you get to starting Emerge? Like, what is your story from creating this vision of arts for the community to getting to where you are now? So it kind of started with the program that I formerly directed called Art on the Edge, which was a program under the umbrella of St. Vincent de Paul. And that program was more arts education based. And, you know, what I was doing was bringing in artists who wanted to volunteer their time to share their talents with uh, children and women that were living in transitional housing or the shelters. And by doing that for, you know, several years, I formed a lot of, you know, close relationships with the artists. And I realized that they were a whole nother underserved population within our community. You know, they really didn't have anywhere to exhibit their work. They there were only more commercial gallery spaces and then coffee shops. And so that was, you know, the idea was to, you know, kind of bridge that gap. And that's how it started. Where could we have a space that, um, or how could we build a space that could still have this arts education component, but then also be better serving the artists and supporting them at the same time. I love it. And when did you, so when Emerge actually started, first of all, when was that? What year? Uh, 2015. Okay. Nice. Holy cow. So you're coming up on six years. Yeah. We actually started uh, the year before that because we would launch pop-up show events prior to fully incorporating and, and then having our physical space. I see. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So as far as the creative process goes for even yourself, is there um, an art form that you really love sinking your teeth into, whether it's painting or being on the wheel or just for your own personal sanity and creativity? So my creative process gets, um, you know, that's another thing that's just kind of like ebb and flow. I try to 
dedicate time to it, but I also try not to force it because that doesn't feel very creative to me. So <laughs> there's a lot of different ways, you know, like I find myself being creative during COVID, you know, during quarantine, I thought, oh, I'm going to be home now uh, all this time. And this will be a great time to get back to creating work. But I really didn't do that because I was, you know, just so overwhelmed by, you know, the state of the world that I decided to start painting all the rooms in my house and, Mm -hmm. and dancing a lot. Uh, Yeah, my daughter and I for exercise were doing a lot of, you know, YouTube dance videos. Mm -hmm. And that was just like great for kind of, you know, keeping the positive energy going and things. But I think just like, kind of seizing the moment of creativity is really important and um and going with what whatever direction that's kind of leading you at the time you know whether it's i want to sit down and write for a bit or i want to focus in on creating this piece of artwork so i think just yeah just allowing like that space for yourself to do that is really important for me Yeah, I completely agree. And I find that it changes too, like exactly what you're saying without being forced. It's like, am I going to dance or even flow through yoga or just make earrings and be more focused on like a specific project or just the creativeness of even like painting a house and changing your environment to inspire you or to ground you or whatever you kind of need for that chapter of your life. I love that. Yeah, because the more you force, the more it just... Yeah, you look back and you're like, just doesn't, it wasn't meant to be. I was forcing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that, you know, when you're a professional artist, that's a different, there's kind of a different way that you have to go about that because you do have to be more disciplined to create work on time. You know, you're, you're usually on a schedule of exhibits or you, you know, whatever, um, updating your shop or whatever, but you still have to, I think, allow that space to just be creative however you're feeling in the moment, at the same time as getting your your job done as an artist, too. Yeah, that is interesting, because I've always wondered, there's a fine line between having art, art for just your own, like, well-being and inner expression, and then once it becomes where it's actually funding your life as well, understanding where you get your inspiration from and how you work so that you can not force it, but keep the inspiration coming on more of a works or regimented schedule. That's because I'm not good at that. So I admire those artists that are able to (laughs) keep it flowing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's definitely, that's a whole nother talent right there (laughs) and discipline. Yeah. For sure. Whether it's like going outside and being in nature, or like you said, like writing, maybe that kind of gets just juices flowing or dancing or anything like that. That's yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. We'll have to ask a working artist. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So as far as the classes and then the ways that you do support the local artists, I mean, I know I've seen you've got pottery classes. You've got all sorts. Will you just talk a little bit about some of the classes that you offer across like the gamut? Sure. Yeah, um, well, I'm very, very excited about our new facility because all of our classroom space is much larger than in our previous space. We have some focal point or some arts that we always have classes in, and those would be pottery. Uh, Pottery is a huge part of our program, and we'll have a much larger pottery studio opening with some two excellent instructors or three excellent instructors, sorry, that are all local and ceramic artists. So we're pretty excited about that. And then we have a, a, oh, well, I guess backing up to the pottery, we, we will be offering classes at beginner all the way through advanced. So there, and then lots of open studio time and probably a couple months from now, we'll be opening up uh, memberships for our studio too. So that's Mm -hmm. all very exciting. And the dark room is another kind of area of focus for us. And 
we will always offer photography classes and film development. Again, that kind of works like the Pottery Studio will, where there'll be open studio times and memberships for that space after uh, students complete the beginner courses. And then they can just go access the darkroom on their own and use that equipment. So uh, another one that we do well, in the same kind of format would be um, printmaking and um, screen printing. So we'll have classes offered in both frequently and a dedicated print making instructor. And then again, like just, it's gonna be so fun for the community, for members of the community to come in, take those initial courses, and then just come in and screen print shirts on your own and, or tote bags, whatever you wanna do. And that we have this new equipment and, you know, this new space to offer that. Other things that we offer from time to time are fiber arts, um, so weaving and, uh, you know, forms of like knitting and crocheting. We have sculpture classes, drawing, and of course, painting too. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, there was a knitting project recently Maybe it was crocheting. Were they making like an octopus or something? Did I see that? Or am I making that up? <laughs> and we had a class where the students were going to make a rainbow pillow. Oh, okay. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. How <laughs> fun, how fun, how fun. That is a good segue, but I mean, 2020 was crazy for all of us. And then the fire happened and your old space was burnt right so that's where and when was that october i uh, no, that actually happened january 20th 2020 holy cow i didn't realize it was that last year is a complete blur to me i know um, so wow so that happened and covid was like march is when it really yeah. like, affected us all right throughout the year and then do you want to talk about your opening on may 5th, 14th yeah so Yes, on the 14th. Yeah, so I kind of feel like, you know, going back to the fire that emerged, you know, just uh, we're the trendsetters for 2020. You know, we showed everyone how the year was going to go and it just <laughs> followed suit. But, but no, it was, uh, you know, right as we were kind of coming to terms with the fire and needing to locate a new building and all of those things then we we did find one and we leased it and not even a week later you know COVID hit our community sheltering in place it just slowed everything down to you know almost a halt so it took over seven months to get our permit and then it took you know, until now to get through our build out. So that was, that was started in October. So it's been a very challenging, um, expensive, grueling process, but I do truly believe that it's going to be worth it for everyone, for just the whole community, because it's uh, such a cool space and just showcases off the artwork so much better. And, you know, we have a great performance space in there too and that you know we're going to have small scale concerts and poetry events and you know all the all those kind of happening but yeah our grand opening re-grand opening is going to be may 14th so that is the may art walk oh right and yeah so we're opening our first show that we've had in a year and a half and it is pretty exceptional and everyone's going to want to see it. Now we have two just amazing artists. Maya Rumsey is a ceramic artist that lives here in Coeur d'Alene. She is uh, making numerous uh, pieces for the show. And then Ronaldo Zambrano, he is a printmaking artist lives in Spokane, but has been very involved with Emerge, especially in our ink print rally for, you know, the past five years. 
So Maya and Ronaldo, they have come up with all of these collaborative pieces and and it's just going to be so fun for people to see their Ronaldo's artwork on ceramics and it was just such a fun twist. So so really looking forward to that and I hope everyone will come down and join us. We have some special surprises in store and some hands-on experiences that you can take part in down in our classroom spaces during the night and live music. It's just, it'll be really fun. It's five to eight. Okay, five to eight. Perfect. It's a perfect time to, and it'll be gorgeous downtown by then, right? The weather will be perfect for roaming around and yeah. Hopefully nice and warm. Yes. Oh, how exciting. I love that. So what do you say to people? I don't know about you, but I have lots of friends that I'm like, I'm not creative. I don't have a creative bone in my body. I can't do creative, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what do you say to people when they say that to you? Because I'm sure you hear it a lot as you're like, it's community, like everyone is welcome. Like people suddenly like put up a wall and then like, I can't do this. What do you think? Yeah, to- I think when I've heard that so many times, not just from community members, but one of my children used to say that all the time. I'm not an artist. I'm not, you know, and um, it's really interesting because I asked him the other day, what was, what is something that he has learned from me that he is taking with him? And he, he kind of, he just told me back what I say to people when they tell me that they're, that they love the arts and they always wanted to be an artist but they're not and so my son Elias he had said back he said to me I've learned from you that everyone is an artist in some way shape or form and really you know you just if you don't think you are it's just because you haven't found you know your medium yet and your right outlet and for my son you know nothing visual came naturally to him. So he can, you know, he's not going to draw or paint or, you know, those things. But just a few years ago, he discovered poetry and was, and really found that to be such soothing outlet for him. Like he was able to really express himself that way. So, which I think is uh, so great. And Mm -hmm. that's just something, you know, I would, I think with anyone that I would tell them. And then the other thing is not just that, you know, keep trying things and, and that you haven't maybe found your right medium yet for yourself. But also I think people say that because they have this expectation for themselves in how they create and, you know, what that's supposed to look like. We really have to let that go, you know, because that's not what being creative is about. It's not about the product. It's about the process. And, you know, the process is something that we can, if we can allow ourselves to just be fully engaged in, you know, that's where that kind of art therapy happens. And, but just people get too caught up in the product. And we try really hard as a team at Emerge to kind of shut down, like when people are taking their first pottery class, don't come in here thinking you're going to make dishes, a new set of dishes. You are here to take time out for yourself to just enjoy this moment play with this clay and don't anticipate or expect anything and when people start doing that that's when they really actually start to grow as an artist and you see like the magic happen you know for sure and it's such a symbolism i feel like for life in general and in our culture where things are supposed to look a certain way and fit a certain way into like the society's view. And, mm. and that's obviously a very broad generalization, but when we get into like the heart of things and the humanity of things, you're like there's so much difference and diversity and self-expression that can be found in like finding your art piece and 
what needs to be expressed from like your life when we're all so different like that thought of it having like a very certain smooth perfect perfect however you want to define that outcome just it just makes me cringe so much because it's like life is it's about the journey it's not about like this end shiny star at the final product right yeah I love that and it's so like therapeutic I love clay I when I did it even in high school it was I didn't even like doing it on the wheel. I like just being like the kid that was like the, the Play-Doh, like, what am I going to make? And those are the pieces that just represent like a certain part of my life. Or I can tell by looking at it. And like, that's what I needed to create at that time, which I yeah. love, you know? Yeah. I love that. There's something so special about ceramics, you know, because you can really almost, yeah, see the hands that created it, you know, and looking in the piece and it's either like this time capsule of yourself or of somebody maybe that is close to you or that you love or that you can pass along to somebody else. So it's, um, yeah, it's really special in that way. Yeah. And I think too, when you look at so many galleries, you look at the artwork and it's so different, right? Whether it's at the Emerge Gallery or the other galleries around town, the different styles. And I think that's what we can admire that other people have like expressed themselves, but it's hard for people then to dig deep enough to understand what their own self-expression looks like. Sometimes, of course, it's like tapping to that root, like you said, of just finding yeah. how would you best communicate that? How would I best communicate tapping into your, wait, repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, I was just kind of saying like each of us needs to find that. Like oh, right. how would each of us like tap into that? Yeah, for sure. What that communication channel is, right? Yeah. 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 For sure. I agree. I love it. Um, So what motivates you? I'm just inspired by, you've done everything so much and emerged, especially even across the last year, like picking, not yourself back up, obviously you've got a team, but kind of like, right? Like, okay, the fire happened, COVID happened. What motivates you? How do you find like joy on a daily basis, just even on a personal level? Well, I mean, I, you know, on a personal level, I am motivated by my family, my husband. We just are not the couple that leaves work outside of our house. You know, we're always talking about what we want to do next and what our visions are and bouncing things off each other. And so that is, that's pretty motivational for me. And, and I feel like we work out a lot of issues like, you know, that could be in our or obstacles that could be in our way that way. And so, so I really rely on those daily chats about what's happening and try to just be out in nature as much as possible and just without technology. And when I can, obviously I have to be tied to my phone a lot, but it's, you know, we live in a great spot where we can kind of soak that in and, and we try to do that as much as can. But, you know, I would say that I'm inspired by so many you know, different things, especially other people that are fulfilling what feels like, you know, their mission here. And I always want to kind of continually reevaluate, am I really doing what, what I should be doing or what is going to impact our community in the most positive way I can. And so thinking on those things helps me to keep fueling that energy, you know, yeah, no, I love that. Yes. And I love that questioning. Sometimes I feel like not what is wrong with me, but that constant like pushing and like striving to do better and to have a better impact or a broader impact or what is my life purpose? I love that stuff. But at some point I'm like, is everyone like this? Is everyone like push? And I don't think everyone is. No. But I'm, I just get so much joy in, in like the process of even life. Like, I don't want to be stagnant. I want to evolve and learn and yeah, just have a, as the world changes, you know, I'm right there alongside it. So I love that so much and having your husband just to bounce ideas off of and that's, yeah. Yeah. That, right. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I would say that also, you know, I'm really inspired by my, you know, my past as a teenager. I, 
had a really rough time and I didn't, I wasn't making great decisions. I didn't graduate from high school. I was involved in just a lot of, you know, just a lot of things or with people that I maybe shouldn't have been, but some I should because they ended up being really fantastic people too. <laughs> so, but you know, the thing that I think about is, oh, I wish there was, I wish there would have been an emerge back then that I could have walked into and felt like I belonged somewhere, you know, because that was kind of always what was missing for me was this sense of belonging and being a part of something. And I, I just, I always wanted that. And so I think that, you know, there's definitely a piece there that I've created Emerge for everyone that feels that, but also for myself, you know, I mean, that's where I belong. And that's, and I know that, yeah, there's just so many other people that feel that for the first time, even when they're in our space. Oh, that's so powerful and beautiful. I love that because especially in those like earlier years of life where we're just figuring out our stuff and making a whole slew of bad decisions in my case. And, and honestly, half of it was just feeling lost. Like, where do I fit? Who are my people? Who am I? So I love like having that ability to go back and create what you needed at that point and still need is so powerful. And in a community like Coeur d'Alene where we're big, but we're small, right? It's Mm -hmm. being able to just bring people together is awesome. Yeah. What is your vision? Like when you're looking to, when you're at dinner with your husband and you're like, dude, in five years and 10 years, like this is what would make me so excited. Do you have that vision that you'd want to share with us? Outside of living on a beach, uh, (laughs) it's a tropical. (laughs) I think, you know, my really one of my biggest goals is just to have Emerge reach the point where it's sustainable. And, you know, we were under so much stress the last few years and that was really hard. That was really hard to enjoy what I was doing, what we were trying to build as a team, you know, all those things, because you just have this looming dark cloud of, you know, we're going to, run out of money any second. So I feel like, you know, we're starting in a better place with this uh, reopening, but I really, you know, that is one of my major goals. The other one is just to be really known in the community. You know, there's still so many people that don't know Emerge and don't know what we're doing down there. And so trying to get the word out so that more people can ask access the space and benefit from the program is definitely a goal of mine. And then now that we're, you know, after we reopen, we'll be able to focus a lot more on reaching and offering classes to more of the underserved populations or at risk. So I'm working with, because that, you know, going back to the program that I was previously a part of, you know, that's always uh, been something that is really important to me. So we're going to, we're going to work on that over the next few years and uh, make sure that we're giving that access to anyone that needs it. I love it. Yeah. That's so powerful. Um, I'm so distracted by your earrings right now. I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. they're um, amazing. Well, one of my very close friends, Taryn gave these to me for Christmas, I think. And yeah, there's cicadas. They're so cool. And which of course is the Emerge logo is a cicada. What is the story behind that? That's kind of a fun story. Cool story. My friend, Chris, he has done graphic design from time to time, but uh, not what he has done for a living. But when I was starting this starting to develop Emerge and talking with him, I wanted him to help me with the logo. And he researched and researched some, you know, and then came up with this cicada. And he told me that he felt like it was the perfect logo for for me because I had just come out of being in a 
16 year relationship that and marriage, you know, that I was not in anymore. And it was this whole new start of my life and being able to focus on my career and really dig in and do what I wanted to do for the first time. So the cicada, it's a, it's not a normal, you know, moth. It cocoons inside of itself. It burrows down into the ground and then it reemerges uh, 14, 15 years later. Wow. And <laughs> yeah, so it was very cool. And, you know, my friend Chris was always so positive with me and just, you know, this is your reemergence time and, um, you know, just you're becoming you for the first time and who you are. And so it's like, oh, that's so cool. It's so cool. What a beautiful story. I didn't know. Is that not fun? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so how do people get to support you? What is the best way to support you? And then of course we've got your website where people can find classes, which is emergecda.com, right? Yes. Yeah. So check it, check out our website, check out our, we're on Instagram, Emerge CDA and Facebook. Uh, Facebook's a great place to keep up on all of our events locally. And I think, you know, first and foremost, the best way to support us is come down and check out our space and visit us, find a way to get involved, whether it's taking classes or, you know, maybe showing your artwork or volunteering, always need volunteers. And there's, we have all kinds of fun things <laughs> for our volunteers to do. And I would say that, you know, if you're, if you're somebody of means that wants to keep, you know, nonprofit art work, you know, continuing on in our community, then we are always accepting contributions and annual donors so that's all on our website as well and you can check it out there and you have a shop on your website now too which yes. is like the best yeah. gifts ever i think like all gifts should be bought there because it's just supporting local and there's such a there's such a diversity of like things on there yeah it's so fantastic you know everything is made here or really close regionally and uh, our program coordinator, Keely, has worked very hard to stock our shop full of the very best jewelry, bath goods, small artworks, uh, stickers, candles, you know, there's ceramics, lots of functional ceramics on there. So that's what's one of the things that's going to be new to our space, too, is we have an actual retail space off our gallery. So we're going to be able to have all, house all of that there and you can come just shop with us anytime after we open. Perfect. What will your hours be? They will be 11 to six. Okay, perfect. And you're on the corner. I'm the worst. Like I go downtown and I can get there. I can picture your space, but I don't know the cross street. <laughs> so it's uh, Lakeside and 2nd Street, 119 North 2nd Street is okay. our Coeur d'Alene, is our address. We're right next to Toro Viejo. Right. And across the street from Architects West. I should know that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Friends over there, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, awesome. And you have stickers too. Like you've got your Emerge CDA stickers around town. So when I was looking at the Love Lives Here stickers, like those were side by side in so many of the businesses, which was fun. So people can get a sticker and support and help share your name and the cicada. The, yeah, it's a beautiful logo. Yeah, we can't wait to put a Love Lives Here sticker on our door. And also uh, definitely going to add one from the Pride Alliance too. So mm -hmm. two organizations that, you know, I just, I love and just always want to be able to support more. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Awesome. Um, before I dive into asking you about your local inspirations, am I forgetting to ask you anything that you wanted to share about Emerge or even Poppy James? Do you want to share with us about your adventure there? Well, that is more, that's a, a pop-up clothing shop at the moment. It will soon have a mobile clothing truck and it's the shop is stocked 
full of vintage and very curated resale items. And so, yeah, tons of clothes, shoes, handbags, all sorts of good stuff to be creative in the way that you dress. So, yeah, so it's so fun. You know, we wanted to do, my partner, Taryn Leach, and I wanted to do something that was just vintage vibe, but different than what we had been seeing. We wanted lots of color and pattern and just things that really caught your eye and made a statement. So that's what Poppy James is kind of that boho street vibe and it's been yeah so it's very fun and just launched and but at the same time it is um a side project for both of us so it's just kind of evolving over time yeah and it's fun to have those too to keep you creative keep you right it's just got multiple ideas out there so yeah. i maybe you went a little crazy on Sunday night, your launch, just so fun. Like you said, I love the creative piece of also expressing that in the way that you get dressed and what you wear, right? I think that's just another that we all need to do. So it can either be boring or it can be fun every morning as you enter your closet, right? Yeah. (laughs) Awesome. Yay. Well, so I like to end with just asking who are three people that inspire you locally to just live a vibrant life and just connected to your purpose and sharing that with the world? Okay, well, this is a really challenging question. (laughs) (laughs) Because I think that you're inspired by different people at different times. And when I read the question earlier, you know, about inspiring to me holistically and you know, the language that you had used. That's why I chose the people I chose. The first person that came to my mind was my very good friend, Rose Bax. And Rose is an auctioneer and she has three small children and a husband who's also an auctioneer. And she is an incredibly hard worker. Uh, She does so many events for charities and uh, nonprofits looking to kind of build up her community. But really one of the reasons that I put Rose on my list was her ability to know when to say no and guard herself, guard her time and her energy and her Uh, time with her family. Mm -hmm. And so that is a lesson that I have to learn a lot and really important to me to be around people that I know are consciously deciding to protect themselves, like in a mental health sort of way. So yeah. And Rose is always, you know, just very positive and love, love, love talking to her. So um, the second person that I have on my list, uh, her name's Rhonda Williamson. Mm-hmm. And do you know Rhonda? I don't know. It sounds yeah. familiar, but I... Did she deliver your baby? Oh. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> Are you serious? No, oh, she really did. She was going <laughs> in the final minute. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So Rhonda has seen so many of us in more ways than we <laughs> thought our friends would. Right. But uh, so also, so another one of those women, you know, that is working so hard and continuing to like evolve, like in her, in her career, but when, and she's busy, you know, she's, They, her and her husband, they bought a small farm a few years or four years. I mean, time's kind of weird, so I can't remember exactly how many years ago, but it's been a little while now. And, you know, that is, you know, that was like this, oh, let's just, you know, dive in and become farmers on the side. So uh, (laughs) that was a lot more work than they had anticipated. And it's so busy and two kids, two teenagers that are, all of that to say that, why I'm inspired by Rhonda is that when you sit down and talk to her, she is a hundred percent making space for you and seeing you and engaging with you. There's no distraction. There's no 
you don't feel that there's something pulling her away from your conversation and that moment with you. And again, that's just kind of right now where I want to be, you know, when I talk with people and when I'm uh, engaging with them. So very inspired by how much uh, Rhonda, you know, just kind of cares for her friends and the people that she's close with and the love that she exudes. And I hope that I can, you know, do that uh, also. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I love that. Yes. Oh, do I need one more person? You don't need one more person. Oh, I okay. Well, I had one fun per. I just also wrote down on my list, uh, Ali Shoot, oh. who is the executive director of the Arts and Culture Alliance. And the reason that I am inspired by Ali is because she just has one of the most like positive, energetic attitudes that I've been around. And, and, you know, even when things are not going, you know, her way, uh, she's just a very, very positive, bubbly force. (laughs) (laughs) And I enjoy that about her always. And yeah, she's just, just so passionate about her community and, continuing always to find more and more ways that she can enhance the arts community here and support it. So yeah, so I just really adore her and I'm inspired by that as well, that positive attitude, which sometimes I'm I'm not sure if I'm exuding. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, right? I think it's just watching so many awesome people in our community that are just they've taken what they believe in and they're going and they have multiple kids and they're balancing this and balancing that and then realizing what's important too i love that piece of just holding space for the conversation and cherishing like being in the moment with people that you just really love and want to be friends with too because it's too easy just to go a million miles an hour saying yes 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 and then you crash in the bed and you're like what just happened <laughs> I don't want to live life that way. I don't want to. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Jenny, for joining me. And we'll just say again, May 14th is coming up fast where everyone can come and see the new space and do some shopping and some creating. Do, do. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you. And I'm such a great time. I can't wait to share it with everybody. And I'll be sporting my new outfits from Poppy James. Hey. (laughs) Yeah, that's fantastic. (laughs) Thank you so much. I really love this. And uh, I'm inspired by you also and just taking the time to talk with people in the community. So thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for joining Jenny and me today. Creativity has always been a huge part of my life. I have such vivid memories from my playgroup and primary school days in England with freestyle dancing to express our emotions decorating our classroom and elaborate art projects of Aztec jungles, and constantly in dress up for some event or show. I love that Emerge has these open arms for the community to gather, create, and explore self-expression. I truly believe that creativity is vital to knowing ourselves and to sharing that light with the world. As I continue this journey of discovery and holistic living, I hope you join me as I get to know more awesome, inspiring people in this Inland West region. Please feel free to share, like, and let me know who you'd like to hear in the future. Sending all the love, light, and vibrancy. Till next time.